60 minutes. 60 minutes. That's how long a hockey game is, right? It's 60 minutes. I just want to make sure because if I know a hockey game is 60 minutes and you know a hockey game is 60 minutes, why don't the Oilers know how to play for a full 60 minutes? That's that's what I want to know. I just want to know why. It's like Hyman scored his 50th goal of the season and the whole team was like, oh, game's over. We won. We don't have to do anything else. We're up 3-1 against Ottawa. Let's just not do anything now. Now, listen, Edmonton, they had a lot of zone time, a lot of pressure. But even in the third period, they only had five shots in the third period or six shots. They had all this extended zone time in the third, and they didn't get a whole lot of actual opportunities. The penalty kill, brutal. One for four on the penalty kill against the Ottawa Senators, and the Ottawa Senators' power play percentage is ranked, well, was ranked 28th going into the game, and we gave up three goals on it. Ch Chikrin hadn't scored in 22 games, and he gets two goals on the power play. I just, very, very fun, very awesome. 60 minutes, hey? You just don't want to play 60 minutes. Got it. All right. Uh, quick recap here. First period, Senators had a good chance on the first shift, but they hit the uh, crossbar. Evander Kane was a uh, scratch. I don't know if he was a healthy scratch. Chris Knobloch called it a maintenance day, and I'll put that in quotation marks. Not sure what that was. Now, uh, Henrique scores a uh, nice play by uh, Ekholm off Henrique's skate, so one nothing Edmonton. Hyman had a good look, attacking in waves early. Yes, the Oilers, they were. They did come to play. Uh, Derek Ryan then takes a penalty in the offensive zone. Chikrin scores seven seconds on the power play. It is 1-1. Some back-and-forth play. Both teams, I thought, were skating well. Hyman was stopped on a good chance. Pickard with a good save on Batherson. Corpusalo then robbed Sam Carrick and Connor Brown consecutively. They just couldn't elevate the puck over his pad, but it was two good looks. DeHarnay then takes an interference penalty. Uh, it was a good penalty kill by M10. Ottawa had zero shots on that penalty or that power play. Henrique then drew a penalty with 5.6 seconds left to play. At the end of the first period, the score was 1-1. The shots were 13-5 for Edmonton, and the expected goals were 1.6 to 0.6 in favor of the Oilers. Now, I had written in my notes, it was a decent period for Edmonton. Ottawa was finding space in the middle of the ice, so we have to clean up a little bit on the defensive side. And did the Oilers clean up on the defensive side? No, they did not. Oilers had a minute 54 seconds of power play time to start the second period. McDavid gets stopped by Corpus Allo. Oilers had a ton of pressure on the power play, and then Dreisaitl rips one home to put the Oilers up 2-1. That is the 90th assist of the season for Connor McDavid. Nurse then has a good rush. Carrick draws a power play for Edmonton, and then Hyman scores his 50th goal of the season. We are so happy for Zach Hyman. I'm a grumpy boy after the game today. No victory chain, but you know what? Zach Hyman always puts a smile on my face. I'm looking forward to making a video on Zach Hyman specifically and talking more about him tomorrow in the day after video. But for now, we'll just stick to the recap today. Henrique makes a good move and had a shot stop. And then Tim Stutzley makes it 3-2 on just the seventh shot of the game for Ottawa. DeHarnay was stopped in close and then Stutzla had another chance in front. Pickard takes a shot up high that stung him. He was down for a little bit, but he was okay. Shots were 25 to 9 Oilers at the half halfway point of the game. Dayarnay then gets called for interference, and I thought that was the worst penalty call of the entire season. I'm not whining about the officiating. The officiating is not why Edmonton lost this game. There are multiple multitude of factors as to why Edmonton lost today against the Ottawa Senators, despite the shot clock being heavily in Edmonton's favor. But that penalty specifically was brutal. That is not a penalty in any league. I don't even care. Even in a no-hit league, that's not a penalty. Just my opinion. Uh, Batherson then ties the game at three. Ottawa's 10th shot of the game. Dreisaitl then had a chance not long after that. He ripped one wide. And then Corpus Allo had two shot, uh, two good saves at the end of the period for Ottawa. At the end of two, the score was 3-3. Shots were 29-12 to in favor of Edmonton. And the expected goals were 3.27 to 1.28 in favor of the Oilers. Heading to the third period... Tie game, tied at three, just like the Buffalo game. But in this case, Edmonton does not score five goals in the third like they did against Buffalo. Oilers uh, going into this period, plus 32 in third period goal differential. Oilers had a power play early to start the third. Nuge hit the post again. Nugent Hopkins hit the post twice tonight. He hit the post late last night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. He is absolutely snake bitten right now. No goal on the power play, but they did have a couple good looks. Eight minutes in and play slowed down. I didn't think Edmonton was generating much. Ottawa was generating literally zero at this point of the third period. Top line had a shift, relentless pressure. They were in the zone for two straight minutes, but I don't think they actually got a shot on net in that two minutes of zone time. McDavid and Yanmark both hooked on consecutive shifts, and there was no call on either of them. 9.15 to play. Senators with one shot in the third at that point. Oilers with only three 
shots despite the extended zone time. Nuge gets stopped on a good shot. He's snake bitten. And then the Senators get a power play with 312 to play. It was on Ekholm for holding. Uh, he was the last man back. He he kind of lost his balance, reached up, grabbed. I forget who it was on Ottawa that he grabbed. Ref, called, ref decided to call that one, which, again, it's a penalty, but there was a... You got to call the other stuff too. So it was brutal. Penalty kill, uh, absolutely putrid. Swiss cheese. Darnell Nurse, Vincent D'Arnais did not have a good game on the penalty kill at all. Calvin Pickard had a horrific game just in general in terms of the goals that were beating him. Yes, Ottawa had high danger looks. I'm pretty sure the high danger chances were pretty even for both teams in this game. So you would have liked to save. But uh, Darnell Nurse and Vinny D'Arnais just kind of flopping around. Chikrin was wide open on both of his goals. Uh, he makes it 4-3 for Ottawa. Then the Senators get an empty net to make it 5-3 at the end of the game. 5-3 Senators. Shots were 36-16 to in favor of the Oilers. And the final expected goal total of the game was 4.08 to 2.30 in favor of the Oilers. So... That is pretty much it for the post-game recap. What did you think about the game? Empton, you know, what did you think about Evander Kane sitting? What do you think about Troy Stetcher maybe getting into the lineup again? And do you sit DeHarnay or do you sit Cody Cece when um, Stetcher comes back in? The Oilers' next game is on Tuesday against the Winnipeg Jets at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I will have a whole lot to talk about tomorrow uh, with these weekend games that the Oilers played against Toronto and Ottawa. So look for my day after discussion tomorrow. That's that's a more long form video. That'll be a 15 to 20 minute long video because I'll have I have lots to talk about. There's a lot going on right now with the Oilers, good and bad. So I do look forward to that. Uh, as always, I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like today's video, make sure you hit like. If you really liked it, make sure you hit subscribe. And uh, as I've been doing at the end of my previous videos recently, tell someone that you love them. At the end of the day, it is just a game. So you guys have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful day if it's daytime where you are, and I will see you tomorrow and the day after. Appreciate all of your support. Take care, everyone.